Ready? Okay. Uh, so we're going to try doing a, another video for this part, uh, partition coefficient lab to help out with the calculations. Um, basically, in a nutshell, the calculations that you do with your lab data in many ways mimic what you did in part D of the pre-lab. So just kind of real quick, I know we went over this in, pre, in a lab, but just remember the part D from the pre-lab, if you remove all the units and turn it into a basic algebra equation, this is what you get. And just simply solving for x, you get eight, x equals 8 moles after one extraction. You subtract the answers, and you can look in your lab for this, I'm not going to go over everything. Put it back up into the equation, you get 1.6 for two extractions, and then I'll leave it up to you to do the last one. Okay, but keep in mind what these numbers are. This is a value of k, the partition coefficient, that was just given to you as an example. But you'll have a value of k that you calculate on your own. Okay? In the numerator, what the 0 0.330 represents is the volume of the TMBE that was used for each extraction. For your calculations in number 3, it's 0 0.50 milliliters. So just knowing what these things represent. The 10.0 is the initial molarity of the acetic acid. That was just a value given. Your molarity is the value that you calculated in the average in the first calculation. So there's just a lot of matching up that you have to do here. So that's kind of how this setup relates to what you're going to do with your experimental data. So moving over to your experimental calculations. So you've collected all your data, you're doing your calculations, and we're certainly not going to review all of this. But in the first calculation, you're asked to calculate the, to standardize the acetic acid. You know that the answer is supposed to be around 1.0, and the whole point of standardization is to get more significant figures, to get a more precise answer. Depending on which pipette you used, you might get three or four sig figs in your final average molarity. And that's, I'm not reviewing the titration calculation, but it's molarity times volume of the NaOH, the one-to-one -one mole ratio, divided by the volume of the acetic acid. You do that three times, you take an average, and here's an example of one of your classmates' answers right here. Now, you may not get exactly this. You may only have three sig figs. Go where the data tell you. So that's, that's just an example. I'm also not going to review the calculation for partition coefficient, but what you're asked to do in calculation number two is calculate the average partition coefficient plus or minus the standard deviation. So that's kind of on your own. Come see me if you need help. But I saw, I think, about four of you do this, uh, either yesterday or today. Uh, this is uh, Friday, so Thursday or Friday. And where we're getting answers somewhere a little less than one. That doesn't mean that you have to get this answer. There's no one accepted answer here. But it's also a unitless number. The calculation section lays this out pretty carefully as how you're supposed to calculate case. So I don't think you'll have too many problems with that. Follow what's in the manual, and you should get an answer somewhere like this. I think where... The, uh, the calculations get a little tough is in number three. Not 3A. Three 3A, three all you're doing, and keep in mind, what, you, what did you do in, in step three of procedure three? You extracted the acetic acid three times. You did three extractions with half a milliliter, 0 0.50 milliliters of TMBE. That's what you did. What you're doing in this calculation is you're mimicking your experiment with the theoretical calculation we discussed before. So the first step is, well, okay, how many moles of acetic acid are left in the aqueous layer at the bottom after three extractions? I think you can handle that. So you do the extraction three times, you pull out the aqueous layer, and you just use the titration calculation. But you stop at moles. So we're not calculating a molarity, so you're just getting the moles of HAC. So I guess I could just write that real quick. So you take the molarity of your NaOH times the volume, of your NaOH times your one-to-one -one mole ratio, moles of NaOH, moles HAC, and stop there. That's all you do. It's a very simple calculation. You've done a titration calculation several times by now. So that's all you do. The part B is maybe the tricky one. I just want to look at how it's written. Yeah, okay, so part B says review the calculations presented in part D of the introduction. So that's this. So now we're going to actually do something similar to what we did before. So, yeah, okay. So part B, you're doing three calculations. So you're setting up the math using your information. So what you'll do is you'll put your value of K, so 0.868, 
equals, okay, x is still what you're solving for. x is the moles of, of uh, acetic acid. That's, so that variable doesn't change. It's still x. And this is the volume of TMBE used to do the extraction. It's not 0.33, it's 0.50. And then the initial molarity of your acetic acid was not 10, it was uh, 1.33 in this case, or excuse me, 1.233. Now that's ignoring units, but that's just hacking it down to the basic algebra. So then you do x equals something after the first extraction, x equals something else after the second extraction, x equals something else after the third extraction. So you do that iterative cycle, cyclical calculation three times, and then you'll compare the two. You won't get good agreement here. <laughs> don't worry about that. Okay, don't worry about that. You won't get great agreement, and that's fine. Uh, what we're trying to show you is how many extractions does it take to really efficiently remove the chemical, and you'll see which one is Maybe three extractions is actually not the best way to go. So we don't, don't want to lose the big picture here. Um, finally, the last one, the, the oh, part C of this is just calculating a relative percent error between your calculation, uh, excuse me, your calculation and then your experiment from before. I think, I think you'll, you'll see that. That's, that's not too bad. So part C, you can do that one on your own. Uh, number four. This is an interesting question. Number four asks you to calculate if you do the extraction not three times with half a mil, but one time with 1.5 mils, which is the more efficient, effective extraction. So in this case, you do the same thing. You set up your K, your X, and instead of 0.5 mils, you do one point. I'm going to check on my sig figs here. Yeah. So you're going to try. You're going to compare. Excuse me. 1.5 mils. So you'll you'll just do this calculation once, not three times, just once. Is how does this single extraction? with all of these volumes combined, so 0.5 times 3, how does that compare to three successive extractions? That's kind of what you're doing here. That's the big picture. It's easy to get lost uh, in the algebra, what it is you're trying to do chemically, but I think that should help. Um, did you, did that make that clear to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, and then, um, so do the calculations, write up your abstracts, and see if you have any questions.